Russell T. Davies is a writer who is quite controversial among certain sections of the fandom, and to be honest, I have my issues with him and the direction he's taken the show in. Fans of the classic era had even more reservations about him back in 2005 due to his inclusion of the soap opera elements that have become a staple of modern Who. Nevertheless, I still really love most of his work from his first era. I recently found an article listing his supposed 10 best stories and thought it would be interesting to discuss each of their placements. Before I delve into that, I want to clarify what constitutes a best episode for me. There's a difference between what one considers a best episode and what one's personal favourites episodes are. To me, best signifies something that is objectively very good. Perhaps it introduces a novel and original concept, features effective dialogue, or boasts exceptional acting. It's about the objective quality. On the other hand, a favourite is something that is still quite good and contains some of those aforementioned elements, but it's more about personal enjoyment and how much fun it is. Number 10, Boomtown. Boomtown definitely feels like a filler episode, so I think that alone makes it unsuitable to be on a list of his top 10 stories. It features the return of Margaret the Slitheen, but there's nothing particularly remarkable about the story. The Rose and Mickey drama is rather mundane. While I appreciate that Rose is always contemplating her personal life, it sometimes detracts from the story. I do value the moments between Margaret and the Doctor, particularly in the restaurant, where the Doctor reflects on himself, his morals, and his actions. These scenes are well-written and impactful. However, I wouldn't place this at number 10, or on the list at all, but there are worse choices. Number nine, Wild Blue Yonder. I recall looking forward to this episode and feeling quite disappointed once I finished watching it. I wasn't as excited as some fans who hoped for the return of Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi, but I was open to the teased darker tone, especially after the Star Beast. What we got, however, was a bit of a mess. I don't understand why the pilot of the ship didn't destroy it when she was sacrificing herself, thus defeating the villains. If she was going to sacrifice herself anyway, why not do that? This flaw undermines the story for me. I'm not keen on the continuation of the Timeless Child arc, of course, but the villains, the not-things, are decent. The underlying theme of friends reuniting and discovering they have fundamentally changed since their last meeting is well explored and intriguing. Seeing Wilf is a good way to help the Doctor regain his footing after recent revelations. Although I wouldn't put this on the list, it's probably Russell's second best script in this new era. Number 8, The Runaway Bride. This is definitely one of my favourite episodes that Russell has written. It's fast-paced with plenty of action and the motorway chase scene is tremendous fun. I particularly enjoy Donna's sassiness. While it's toned down a bit in season 4, it works better there, but I still like her in this episode. The festive elements and humour make it very entertaining, though it's not a masterpiece. The dynamic between Tennant and Tate is objectively brilliant, but the Rachnos Empress is a bit static. The Rose subplot somewhat bogs it down, but overall it's a fun watch. I wouldn't place it on a list of his best stories, but again, it's one of my personal favourites. Number 7, Bad Wolf and The Parting of the Ways. These two definitely deserve a spot on this list. Although the reality game shows make the episodes feel a bit dated, they're presented in a tongue-in-cheek manner that makes them acceptable. Christopher Eccleston truly shines in this story. His portrayal of despair when he thinks Rose is dead is extraordinary. His acceptance of his guilt over the time war and his regeneration scene are incredibly effective. Jack is, as always, a joy, and his death hits hard. The Daleks are used tastefully in the story. They don't come across as tedious or typical villains. The narrative leans into the horror aspect of them with all the destruction and killing. 
Number six, The Stolen Earth and Journey's End. I believe this story deserves to be on this list, and yes, I would include it among my favourites as well. The story brings together characters from the first RTD era, the Doctor, his companions, Sarah Jane and her son, Torchwood, and it does so in a way that makes the shared universe feel genuinely interconnected. It feels right to bring all these characters together at this point. Placing it at sixth position seems fair, as it does have its flaws. Considering the multiverse, the plan to save reality should have not succeeded, but that is a common issue when discussing any fictional property involving a multiverse. If there are infinite universes, then at least one of them should have the same circumstances as those in our universe, but slightly altered so that the Daleks do win, thereby wiping out all the other universes. Additionally, the Metacrisis Doctor and Donna's miraculous resolution could be seen as a deus ex machina of sorts, but I find it less troublesome here compared to, for example, Last of the Time Lords because it does have consequences. Donna's memory is wiped and those scenes are truly heartbreaking. Davros returns and is handled well, unlike in Destination Scarrow, but we'll, we'll leave that aside for now. Number five, The Waters of Mars. I would argue that this one deserves to be in first place. The Waters of Mars excels due to its compelling main plot about water transforming scientists into water zombies. However, what truly elevates this episode is the character development for the Doctor. After enduring so much loss, he decides to defy his own rules and play God, which inevitably backfires on him. The scenes where he grapples with his morals and witnesses the group losing their loved ones to the water are profoundly effective. I can't think of a single negative aspect regarding this story. Everything from the dialogue to the design, the music, and the exceptional acting is fantastic. Number four, Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. I find it challenging to determine how I feel about this story and where it stands objectively. When I first watched it, I was heartbroken by the separation of the Doctor and Rose, and that is done very well. However, since watching Classic Who and learning that the Doctor generally avoids romantic entanglements, this story has dropped in my ranking of best stories. It's interesting to consider these stories in two ways. First, do they stand up as good Doctor Who stories when considering the classic era? And second, do they work within their own rules? This story fits the latter, but not necessarily the former. I do have an issue with how easily the Cybermen are defeated. Why was that necessary? The romantic angle also bothers me, but if you view this story solely through the lens of New Who, it does work quite well and brings the arc, which began in School Reunion, to a close. The Doctor's struggle with his desire to be with Rose while knowing he will outlive her feels symbolic. While I wouldn't place it on this list or at such a high position, I wouldn't argue too much if you think it deserves to be included. Number three, 73 yards. You might know how I feel about this story, or you might not, so I'll summarize briefly. I think the first half is very tight and concise with excellent dialogue and a compelling story reminiscent of Blink. However, the second half falls flat. Shifting away from the Welsh folklore angle to a political side story is a significant misstep and detracts from the episode. Many plot threads remain unresolved, and while not everything needs to be answered, the episode doesn't provide enough closure. Credit to the director, Millie Gibson and Murray Gold, the story is atmospheric and effectively unsettling. I don't think it belongs on this list, but if the first half were considered as a standalone episode, it would definitely deserve a spot. Number two, Turn Left. I really like Turn Left, and I think it's very good on paper as well. It provides an alternative perspective on the events of the show from Donna's viewpoint. The Doctor is barely present, and the idea of linking every significant event to him can be problematic, as it makes him seem omnipotent, like Kang from Loki. Nonetheless, the episode works well in setting up the finale and handles Rose's return very well. Number one, The End of Time, parts one and two. 
I might be in the minority, but I find these episodes largely dull. The only memorable moment in part one is the scene with the Doctor and Wilf in the cafe. Although I usually dislike how the 10th Doctor views regeneration as death, I appreciate the different approach they took this time around. In part two, Timothy Dalton stands out with his commanding presence. When people praise part two, they mainly highlight the regeneration scene, which is fitting and sad for the 10th Doctor. It's understandable that it drags out, given that we later find out 10 was supposed to be his second to last incarnation. What was RCD thinking with that monster mash of a master? Sims Master in Season 3 was already somewhat of a parody, but this is too much. I wouldn't include Part 1 on the list, but Part 2 perhaps should be considered. Overall, when these episodes are good, they are excellent, but the dull moments make them less appealing. I agree with some of the stories on this list, but if we're talking about RTD's best episodes or stories, why aren't Midnight and Utopia included? Tell me what you think about all of this in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.